If you want me to continue with my work, it is crucial to support the channel via Patreon. Moreover, make sure to subscribe to Bobby's Perspective on Rumble. All the links are in the description box below. May Allah bless you all. Alright guys, so welcome back to the channel, if you're new, my name is Bobby. Guys, you really want me to react to Shahid Bolson, and moreover, since my recent video where I talked about nationalism and Islam, you truly wanted me to dive even further into this topic. Therefore, today we're gonna react to Shahid Bolson and his video, Should Muslims Ally with the Christian Right Wing in the West? Shahid Bolson is a prominent intellectual in the Muslim world, born in the United States, inspired by figures like Gandhi and Martin Luther King Jr. He dropped out of school to pursue justice. At 22, he converted to Islam and became actively involved in the Muslim community. In 2006, Shahid faced a life-altering event, spending seven years on death row in the United Arab Emirates. Upon his release, he settled in Istanbul, focusing on non-violent activism. In Malaysia, he advocated for Rohingya rights and established the Middle Nation Channel, addressing economic sovereignty, political independence, and psychological decolonization. Guys, if you enjoy the content, leave me a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and check out the links in the description box below to further support my work. And now, with no further ado, let's have a look. I know that there's a segment of the population in the West, uh, you know, in America, in Europe, in the UK, uh, who feel that their society, that their civilization went astray uh, because they moved away from religion, from Christianity. And there are people who uh, believe that what they need to do is to revive what they call traditional uh, conservative values, Christian values, and so on. This description is absolutely accurate here. I myself come from an Orthodox Christian background before reverting to Islam, and I saw the same thing happening within my generation. All of a sudden, people realize that we are on the wrong path, so to speak. Those liberal values do not help us. Therefore, they seek refuge in tradition. Return to tradition was the big slogan here. And therefore they return to what their ancestors did, basically. Not their parents, really, because the baby boomer generation, they enjoyed the perks of liberalism, such as the newfound technologies of entertainment. So therefore many of my peers found themselves in a household that was not very religious, and therefore they looked into what their grandfathers did, their great-grandfathers, etc., you name it. And this is why they became conservative when it comes down to political orientation, and moreover, they embraced Christianity, either Catholicism or Orthodoxy, because those are the most traditional forms of Christianity. And these people uh, are generally regarded and generally regard themselves as right wing on the political spectrum. Sure. And there are Muslims in the West uh, who believe that we can ally with the so-called right wing on the basis of shared traditional values. But I think that this is uh, just as much of a mistake as the Muslims who thought that we should ally with the so-called left and with liberals. Yes, I absolutely agree here because Islam is neither left nor right. Islam is Islam and has its own law, of course. You see famous people like Patrick Bad David advocating for Muslims to become more conservative so the conservatives can get the Muslims vote. We have so much more in common. We share the same values, don't we? No, we don't. The reality is, of course, that those conservatives base their ideology upon Christianity to an extent, as long as it fits their political agenda and moreover on ethnic ethnocentric view. And this, of course, goes absolutely against Islam. Islam is not ethnocentric. And moreover, I find it absolutely hilarious when Christians say, I'm a conservative Christian, whatever that means, man. If you truly were a Christian, you wouldn't have to add conservative to your label. It doesn't make sense. Moreover, conservatism is a fairly new term. It has been used for the very first time in 1818. So therefore, if you're speaking about Christianity, Christianity is supposedly 2,000 years old. Why do you need a modernist movement to conserve Christianity? It doesn't make sense at all. And therefore, this is not a truly religious movement. It never is. You have the left, you have the right, and then they're infusing their political ideas into religions that let them mold them. This is really what is happening. But you cannot do that to Islam, because Islam is complete and entails a political system. Therefore, yet again, Islam is neither left nor right. Because look, the truth is, there is no right or left wing in the West. There is a very limited spectrum of discourse, the parameters of which uh, are rigidly enforced 
to exclude anything of substance. Pundits and commentators on either side of this narrow spectrum are tasked uh, with making the discourse appear broader than it is, while simultaneously uh, fixing the parameters of discussion uh, by articulating the official positions of each acceptable political extreme. Yeah, very well spoken. To sum this up and make it more digestible for the common man, what he is talking about is essentially that those two ideologies talk about the same thing and they're controlled as well. Because, to come back to Christianity, Christianity prohibits sexuality that is just the case however if you look into the clash the battle between the left and the right when it comes down to the topic of homosexuality you will see that the left advocates for everything goes and the right wing will tell you oh please leave alone our children however sexual marriages are a-okay with us and if you go back 20 30 40 years you will see that the conservatives were against marriages but now all of a sudden they have no issues with that any longer so therefore they're moving the goalpost you have this progressive left that will tell you everything you want you can do and then you will have the right wing that curbs the momentum a little bit but eventually you will get there that's what they do you know people like to talk these days uh, about gatekeepers that's a very popular term these days but the real job uh, of gatekeepers isn't to decide who gets to be let in it is to ensure that no one can get out. So there's no real difference between, say, a uh, Rachel Maddow and a Dennis Prager, between an Anderson Cooper and a Bill O'Reilly, not in terms of their function, because their function uh, is to make it appear that there is broad diversity of opinion, broad discourse. But that huh. broad discourse is actually just Paid opposition. Uh, a mural Controlled of opposition. a vast horizon that's been painted on the wall of a prison cell. So look at just one area in the West, uh, in Western society. Just look at relationships between men and women. So on the so-called left, uh, you have, you know, the woke side of the spectrum. You've got third <laughs> or fourth wave feminism. Meet you my wife's the, boyfriend. Uh, LGBTQ. Uh, you have all this confusion about what a woman is. You've got the constant drumbeat proclaiming that everything is toxic masculinity and misogyny. Sure. Uh, and you've got this whole uh, complicated new set of protocols around consent, where even customary attempts at flirtation and seduction can be construed as grooming, on and on. I mean, I would say that I don't know how you could possibly make it more complicated for men and women to enter into a relationship than what the left has done. But then there's the people on the right, the so-called right. There you have these... Red pillars, black pillars, MGTOW, and all this uh, alpha male mascul masculinity, machismo, you know, teaching men that women are hypergamous gold diggers, marriage is a scam, women are inferior, and no yep. one should ever invest emotionally in a woman and so on and on and on. Yeah, I talked about this briefly in previous videos, of course, so ridiculous. You have those red pillars telling you how degenerate those women are, but ultimately they are looking to hook up with those degenerate women. They're blaming the women on their body count. However, they are involved in promiscuity, in adultery themselves. So therefore they are creating those women directly, this hypocrisy. They're indoctrinating young men uh, into a mindset that guarantees that they will never be attractive to a woman or ever be involved in a serious relationship with a woman both sides i disagree with the first part here they can be attractive to a certain type of woman however that will not be sustainable and moreover they will acquire a disdain if you will for the opposite sex over time if they're involved in such behavior and therefore the latter part is correct they won't be able to have a meaningful relationship i'm determined to ensure that men and women do not get together and do not procreate both sides seem to want you to go extinct. They might procreate now, there's no right wing or left out of wing wedlock. The right wing uh, are the people who tell you constantly on the biggest public platforms in the media that they're saying what they're not allowed to say. They're getting paid yeah, hundreds of millions of dollars <laughs> and generating millions and millions of views 
saying the supposedly unsayable. Yes, this is absolutely hilarious. And this is what I talked about previously on my channel here as well about the so-called people that escaped the matrix. So they escaped the matrix. <laughs> they escaped their small YouTube channels. And now all of a sudden they are on mainstream media. They're on television telling you how the matrix is attacking them. Yes, yeah, sure. Supposedly unsayable. <laughs> but of course, this is all within the designated discourse. Yeah, duh. As far as the so-called right wing goes, the so-called Christian right or traditionalist uh, right wing, well, it's incoherent. Threat. Well, it has to be incoherent because Christianity has no jurisprudence. It doesn't have exactly. uh, that kind of system. You know, one kind of Christian will say that Christians shouldn't drink alcohol, while another kind of Christian, Catholics say, literally serve wine during their religious services or used to. So which is it? They still do. You know, some Christians think that homosexuality is a sin. Others say God is love and everything is fine, no matter what you do. So there's no solution in uh, so-called Christian traditionalism. I personally don't like to appeal to the different dominations. I simply stick with Orthodox Christianity. Of course, I'm a little bit biased here because I come from an Orthodox Christian background. However, it is true. You can look it up historically. The Orthodox Church was the early church, was the first church. And therefore, I say that this is the rightful church Christianity. Not saying that therefore it is the right religion, not at all. But I'm saying that this is the truest form of church Christianity that we can find. However, However, the main point is, and he mentioned this here, that it doesn't have a law. So even if you go within Orthodox Christianity, you will find pretty clearly laid out what is permissible and what is not. However, it is not based upon a law and therefore you are missing a political structure. Islam has a political structure and therefore does not require a left-wing or right-wing stance. However, Christianity does, and this is why we see conservative Christians. So there's no solution in uh, so-called Christian traditionalism. You can't backtrack on the path that you're on to make things better. Like I've said before, you're on the wrong path in the first place. So going backwards isn't going to help. Well, I mean, look, there's a reason why your societies abandoned Christianity to begin with. Because the church didn't actually civilize you. Because how could it? I mean, you abandoned uh, Judaic law, which at least was a law. And you replaced it with ambiguity and moral uh, capriciousness, where you either have to uh, you either have to have the uh, church fathers decide for you what's right and what's wrong, arbitrarily, or else you just have to let your own heart decide, as if your uncivilized heart is even a trustworthy guard against selfishness and desires. You rejected uh, theocracy for secularism because your theocracy was already immoral anyway. Yeah, the man speaks my mind here. I mentioned this a million times before as well. And this is one of the reasons why I embraced Islam after all, because I saw that Christianity is a failed system and that Christianity was the breeding ground for secularism. This is the past of Christianity. This is what has happened. And there is no turning back, as he said absolutely correctly. Once you understand that it is a failed system, you will have to remove your ego. There is no pride in this. You will have to understand which where society went wrong and then make the right choice. And it granted divine status uh, to tyrannical men who pretended to represent God on earth. So really, uh, your secularism was just a cosmetic change because you're still doing the same thing. Men were deciding what was moral and what was right and what was wrong before under the church. And they continued doing that after secularism, claiming essentially the same level uh, of absolute moral authority. The only difference, uh, really, between uh, secularism and theocracy, according to the West, the way the West practices it, the separation of church and state, the only difference is that it allowed the exile of morality from the realm of business. So the point is, there's no solution in going back uh, to the thing That's where capitalism that works. already was not convincing or compelling enough for you to have kept it, uh, kept hold of it to begin with. You let go of it for a reason. It didn't provide... Uh, sustainable, codified, practical guidance for you. Uh, it didn't do it then and it's not doing it now and it can't do it now. That's why you moved away from it in the first place. And who are the big heroes of this traditionalist movement? You've got like Jordan Peterson, uh, who was supposed to be sort of the messiah of masculinity what do you mean? for young men. Mr. Return to Traditional Christian Values. This is a man 
who can't even answer the question directly whether or not he believes in God. And who Depends started cashing in on God. his notoriety as soon as he possibly could. Caring about depressed and lonely young men all the way to the bank. Yeah, it's absolutely amazing how a man can write book after book about Christianity, about the Bible, about the mythical stories, the mythos of the Bible, but ultimately cannot tell you if he believes in God or not. He's become now a parody of himself. And he did Very that true. for money. Sold his soul to the Daily Wire. Now he's just a standard <laughs> issue right wing Who is the Daily head. Wire? Just run through an AI program to make all of his talking points have more syllables, to make the normal talking points sound more academic. And your other one is uh, Ben Shapiro. That's the other one they've got. And maybe Dennis Prager. Both of them are Jewish. I mean, just ask Ben Shapiro. I didn't want to say it. willing to pray in a Christian church, if it's even allowed for him to do that. But of course, you'll need the Jews to help you with articulating some kind of uh, traditionalist morality because they at least have some kind of law. They have some kind of system. It just happens to be the law and the system uh, that Christianity jettisoned right from the get-go. That's what even made it Christianity. So that's a bit awkward. But look, it's not only Jews. Holy you can see energy. Christians now, uh, you know, wanting to revive Christianity as if that's the solution to the moral decadence of the West, the deviants. But look at what they're doing. Now you can see uh, Christians basically trying to Islamize Christianity. I mean, you've got <laughs> preachers going viral online, going viral on social media, talking about, yep. I'm not going to let no Muslim out pray me, mm. right? So you have Christians now prostrating in prayer, making sajda like Muslims. Okay, so first and foremost, let me clarify some things. In Orthodox Christianity, there is still a prostration. Not everybody does it. However, when I went to the Orthodox Christian monasteries in Greece, I still saw monks prostrating the way that Muslims prostrate nowadays. But that being said, I agree with his talking points here. And I have to chuckle because I went through a similar phase myself. Once I started reading the Quran and I compared it to the Bible, out of a sudden, all of those passages in the the Bible stood out very clearly to me. Hey, the Bible says as well, women should cover. Hey, the Bible says as well, we shouldn't eat pork. Actually, those are the things that the Muslims do. So we should do them as well. Moreover, the Bible doesn't really speak about the Trinity. So maybe the Father is God. So God alone. So yes, absolutely. Those are the steps. First, you become more conservative. Then, by default, you become more Christian because you cannot become a Muslim. God forbid, right? That's the enemy's religion. So, therefore, you embrace the ancestors' religion yet again. And therefore, you start looking into Christianity. All of a sudden, you see that Christianity doesn't fix all of those problems. Then you start reading the Bible and then you see, well, the Old Testament is actually very similar to Islam. Ah, it's the bad, bad Christians that do not adhere to true Christianity. We have to return to Christianity. Yeah, that makes sense. But all of this ultimately fails completely because Christianity is not the Bible and Christianity is not Jesus. Even if you look into Orthodox Christianity, they will tell you the same. You have to adhere to the church fathers. The church fathers compiled the Bible. So therefore, you can't just read the Bible. And it's true because if you look into the Bible with a fresh set of eyes, you will never find the Trinity within it. This is a doctrine that is man-made. It has to be told. And therefore, the same yet again applies to Jesus as well. Jesus' message is completely different from the Christian message. You have to decipher, you have to distinguish, you have to do the work. And if you do, ultimately, you will end up at Islam. It's become desirable in the West now for men to grow their beards and you'll be made fun of if you don't have a beard. Well, that's a Muslim thing. You have people like uh, Candace Owens talking about dressing modestly. You know, never mind the fact that she's got herself made up to look like one of the Kardashians these days. Talking about women uh, <laughs> covering up. They're basically saying that in order to be a good Christian, you ought to act more like a Muslim. But they want to tell themselves that this is all from their deen. But they're trying to copy us. And see, this is the core problem. This is the core of the problem. Westerners, like everyone else, have a fitra. They have an innate nature. And the truth of the matter is that that innate nature conforms with Islam. But their society a has, them, has propagandized them, know. has made them believe uh, that their civilization, that their culture, that their society embodies that nature, that innate nature. But it doesn't. This is the root of the cognitive dissonance. Internally, you believe in fundamental values. And your society uh, tells you that Western values, Western culture, Western civilization represents the pinnacle of those values. 
when it is actually a civilization that contradicts and opposes those values down to the most minute detail. Yeah, very powerful words here. And if this is the first time for you seeing my face, it's not that I just converted from Orthodox Christianity to Islam and that's that. Quite the opposite. I went into Buddhism, Hinduism, Jainism, meditation, all kinds of spiritual practices. I even went to the Amazon jungle where I drank with the shamans and if anything all of the spiritual seeking taught me that yes we do have a natural predisposition we have the truth within us so to speak and therefore it is not the external world that can imprint any type of value any type of righteousness onto us any type of morale no we can find it within ourselves aka the fitra we can find what is right and wrong within our hearts so to speak and therefore islam as the true religion is a reflection of that fitra of course it is imprinted in us by god and therefore anything good within society would come directly from god of course and not vice versa. And this is why nationalism stands in stark opposition to Islam, of course. This is what the West wants to tell you. It is essentially like Rome all over again, telling you that this system is so superior. This system is God ultimately, and this is why it is successful. But you see it falling, and you still believe that it is successful based upon what? Arrogance and pride. Why so many of you feel sick? That's why so many of you feel confused. That's why you feel hopeless. That's why you feel depressed because you are living in a hell that you're constantly being told is a paradise. So not only does that make you feel sick, but they feed you more of what is making you sick while telling you that it's a cure. You know, we need to revive traditional Western values. That's the problem. No, traditional Western values is what got you where you are now. All right, guys, this is it for today's video. I'm going to cut it off here. If you want to watch the full video of Shahid Bolson, I'm going to link it in the description box below. Check out his channel, Middle Nation. I basically said everything I want to say throughout the video. I myself come from a Christian background. Moreover, I was a nationalist, if you will. Even though I was never politically involved, I sympathized with right-wing nationalistic ideologies because I truly thought that this is the cure. As he mentioned in the end, this is what they sell you this ideology as. This will save us, an ethnocentric, nationalistic worldview based upon Christianity, return to tradition, and everything will be fine. Yeah, sure, as if we didn't try that before. The irony of the situation is, of course, that everything that a conservatist is seeking, he can find within Islam. This was exactly the pathway that I took. In my 30s, I woke up to realize, Whew, well, my 20s passed, and what have I done? I chased women, I went to parties, and what not. Nothing was truly meaningful. Then I seeked spirituality, false spirituality. I tried to find a meaning in life and didn't find anything. So what do I do? Return to Christianity. Once you do that, you naturally seek a more conservative life. Hmm, maybe it is time to settle down. Maybe I should get a wife. But look around. I can't really find wifey material. I would like a more conservative woman. Oh, look at the Muslims. Actually, they are pretty conservative. But well, that is Islam. And therefore, because you are returning to tradition according to the right-wing narrative, you cannot look into Islam. It stays the enemy's religion. It stays a foreign thing. And you're not even allowed to look into it. You have to find the solution within your tradition. It doesn't work any other way. This is what my family said as well on the Balkans. If you seek God, you will find him in our churches. That's it. There is no other solution for you. And the same applies, of course, to the traditionalist conservative Christian. Many Christians that I met used to be Protestants, and then all of a sudden they become Catholics or some hardliners. They become Orthodox Christians. And all of a sudden they feel as if they truly left the West, and now they're in the East. Now they're supporting Russia. Now they're supporting Greece. Now they're supporting the Balkan. Wow, they really broke out of the Matrix. It is all a farce. Of course, it is all a failure. The only truth is found in God. And therefore the question becomes, what is God's religion? Can God's religion really come down to earth without any laws? Does this make sense to you? 
Or is this the devil's religion? Maybe, where you can do what you want. Does God's religion come without a guidance? Moreover, does God's religion come with confusion, where you have to pray to Mother Mary, you have to pray to the Holy Spirit, you have to pray to Jesus, and what not? Moreover, if it truly was God's religion, and you love conservatism, and somehow conservatism is lined up with God, why is God's religion, in your case Christianity, not able to preserve what you find value? You burn. Little hint, because it's wrong. Stop chasing your own tail. Stop looking for solutions within your own fallen system. Stop returning to tradition and return to God, i.e. Islam. All right, guys, and this is it for today's video. If you liked it, leave it a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed already, guys, please do so. And if you want to support this channel by Patreon, for example, all the links are in the description box below. Thank you so much for your ongoing support, guys. And as always, may God bless you all. Much love and peace.